Hello, BookTube, <laughs> and welcome to another Zoom interview. As I've mentioned on my channel, I recently cracked Zoom technology, and so none of you is safe. And today I'm talking with Matthew from Maybury Book Club, and you will all know him from his BookTube channel, and you can see behind him that he's got walls and walls of books, and yet, <laughs> in, my, in my perverse fashion, I have other subjects than books in mind to grill him about. We'll probably end up talking about books too, but I have some, a main subject in mind. So welcome, Matthew. <laughs> welcome to these Zoom chats. I think you can probably guess uh, what the subject is. Yes. Uh, hello, Steve. I, I guess it's the tiny house. Yes. Those of you who don't know what he's talking about, Matthew, in addition to having a wonderful BookTube channel, which is about his experiences and the stuff he's reading, in addition to living with a couple of wild hog-sized cats, <laughs> Matthew also lives in a tiny house. And by that, I don't mean a small house, just a small house. I mean, there's a movement, mainly in America, called the tiny house movement, where you have custom, a custom-built house with an extremely small ecological footprint, an extremely small space where everything is built for maximum compression and usability as a kind of, well, you could tell me, you're the expert since you're living in a tiny house that was custom built for you, right? The movement is kind of a, a, yeah. a response uh, to hyper-consumerism in a way. The house, built my, the house was built by my friend Ben and we, we designed it uh, completely from the ground up and we built it together. So I was involved in the, I was involved in the entire process from mm -hmm. uh, brainstorming to drawings. Wow. Uh, all the actual construction and ev every, every, anything you can think about in the entire house was considered and thought over specifically for me. And by for, for what I wanted. So you designed and by me, which is that in itself is very rare. Most Americans can't say that. You designed your living space, every aspect of it. Yes, um, my friend Ben did the, the actual uh, nuts and bolts designing, but I, I would tell him what I wanted, and then okay. we would work on it together. So, the number one question for tiny house livers: Why? Why did you do that? For, for me, and for me, it was of um, your age in America are living from apartment to apartment. Why did you decide to do this? Um, financially, it made a lot of sense. And I, I found myself in a position where it was, it was extremely doable. Um, so my, my friend Ben um, is, is a masterful woodworker. He's built homes. He's very good with his hands and his wood shop. And it's something that he wanted to do. And I was in a situation where I could, have, I could use a house. So we, we just, we just um, went through some of the things, some of the things you have to figure out right away, like where to put it. Well, yeah, and it, you have question. to have problems. What are the logistics of land? I mean, you can't just plop a tiny house down yeah, there, right? That's one of the first considerations. Where are you going to put it? And I was lucky enough that my friend Ben, other than, on top of building the house, uh, has a large property, and we agreed that we would put the house just in the middle of his field. Um, he has a couple acres. It's just a big field, and uh, we put it there. the The other thing that um, was special to me is, as far as a decision to build it. Is that I work at a lumber yard. So I talked to the owner, said I was building a house, and I got maybe 40% off. On the um, and when you're talking about building materials, it's thousands, thousands of dollars off. Um, so the fact that I was building it turned out to be very economical for me. So you had a, a suite of advantages. Right, you had a yeah. new, your friend owns the property. Your friend was willing to design and help build the house. And you work at a lumber yard. You could get discount lumber. Yeah. Plenty of people indulge in the tiny house movement who don't have any of that, right? There are whole businesses that provide ready-made tiny houses for people. So- um, Yeah, I, I, I couldn't, 
after I've been involved with it, um, if you've seen any, any of those videos about people that have no experience with um, home building or carpentry or anything like that, it, when, when I got into doing it with then, I quickly discovered it, to, to me, it would just be impossible. There, there, there's so much mathematics. Um, there's so much uh, real specific design uh, issues. There's uh, coding. Um, and there's a million things that are inside the house that you don't even ever think about. Right. Um, but most how people have the electric. Right. Right. So. Okay, so you had all of those advantages. You had a, a suite of advantages to help you along this line and you wanted a house of your own. Okay, but technically speaking, none of that actually answers the question of why a tiny house, right? Okay. I mean, why this as opposed to a larger house, which would have been possible, right? Or an addition on somebody else's house or or some or treehouse for that matter. Why this? What appealed to um, you about it, knowing what you must have known, which is that you would have very little space. Yeah, I've I've never. Uh, the, I'm very happy in a small space. You are so. Yes, um, like other than my books, I really don't have a lot of possessions. So. Well, you have a pair uh, of six-foot-long saber-toothed tigers. Yeah. <laughs> well, Did those they, those they are not. The, 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 they um, I, I got I got both of them. I adopted both of them after I moved. So, uh, the larger cat, Andy, Andy, and I moved in on the same day together. My first day in the house was the first day Andy was in the house. Um, but. Um, I've, I've never had a lot of possessions. There wasn't a big minimizing. Um, there wasn't. That was going to be Con another one of my questions. Is because that is often those two things often go hand in hand. Some some young person will be hyper embracing a minimizing minimalism Marie Kondo idea, and it feels natural for them while they're doing that to also embrace a tiny living space. But for, you're saying you were like that anyway. Right. When I moved in. I, I had space to spare. <laughs> I, st I still have empty and drawers. <laughs> <laughs> That's unusual. Um, right? Yeah, I, I just, uh, I, I don't even know what I would buy, to be honest with you. Um, it sounds if, like if you're it's a not books. Fit. Um, so how, um, I, I how does your know. tiny house work? Does it have two doors? A back and a front door? Two exits? I have one door. I have... Um, I have one front door, the, I have the main door over here. And then in the house, uh, the, the only other door is to the bathroom. So uh, there's one exterior door and then one interior door. Okay, so you don't have a second exit. Correct. And what about uh, floors? Do, did you and Ben build up? Do you have to go up to your sleeping arrangements? I have a walk. I don't know if you can see it a on the lock. screen, okay. but there's a that's here oh, and a lock that. that goes up. Okay. All right. And what about and, in terms of environmental control? I mean, it seems natural to me to assume that a tiny house would be easy to heat, but what about to cool? So the, the house is built to be hyper efficient uh, yes. in, in a lot of ways. Uh, the the floor, walls, and ceiling are all insulated with uh, rock wool, which is um, sort of a like a stringed out rock that's made into uh, almost like cotton candy, but it's, it's rock and it's waterproof, uh, sound deadening, uh, fireproof, um, and and really really well insulated. And then I have something called a ductless mini split, which is uh, on the gable end of uh, on the far wall, and it's um, it's a high efficiency unit that um, controls the cooling, heating. It has fan, uh, it has a fan function, and also humidity. So it's an all-in-one unit. Okay. And what about and if, Are you linked to something? If I were to look at your tiny house from the outside, do wires attach to it at all? 
the, the wires are all run underground. They are. And I'm attached to um, the, the property that I'm on has a main residence. So um, my house runs to the main residence and ties into their box. Okay. And of course, there's a question dealing with tiny houses. <laughs> it's taken all of my self-control not to open with that question, but nevertheless, I think you know what's coming. The toilet. <laughs> it's the number one thing tiny house people want to talk about. The toilet. Okay, so uh, as far as I can I have... understand, there are a couple of options for tiny houses. There are a couple of options. What was your toilet journey, <laughs> Matthew? <laughs> It's it's a big discussion. It's a big discussion. Um, it's the Achilles heel, if, if you would, of a tiny home. You have a toilet. You have to have a toilet. So I, ha I had a few options. Um, the, the first thing is that I have I have running water. I have plumbing, but I have what's called gray water. So that means what is I that? can uh, gray water is uh, I, I turn on the shower, the faucet, um, and I have a drainage system that um, um, dr drains out all the water. So there's a, there's a French drain field outside that takes out, um, you know, when I'm showering or doing the dishes or things like that. Um, my plumbing does not have what's called black water, which is going to be waste. Um, so we, we decided, I decided to go with a composting toilet and it's, I knew that um, was gonna come up. <laughs> we, we built uh, this the custom box. Um, it's basically a really fancy bucket, but it has it has a housing unit on the outside that makes it look like a toilet from the outside. Okay. And inside the in inside the unit, there is um, a constant exhaust fan built inside to uh, pull out odor. Okay. And um, in you can have any receptacle in there, but um, you you put your bucket or whatever, and then you have a variety of options. I use peat moss, so um, you just use the bucket, and then I have um, I have a composting um, area in the field where um, every so often I clean. I, I take the bucket out and okay. remove the waste. And um, what about, you mentioned your gray water. Mm -hmm. Do you use that? That's your, basically your runoff used water. We, we put in a French drain field, so that water just goes um, out, out into the field. There's oh, okay. um, so you perforated... don't recycle your gray water. You don't use it for like, no. I don't, I don't even know. I've seen, I've seen a lot of tiny house people who use every drop of water. They re and reuse it until it's not usable anymore. So you don't do that, you uh, drain yeah. out the gray water. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, my, my next question is not necessarily connected to the, to the toilet, but I'm naturally curious to know in the whole overall view of this choice of yours, what is the, can you talk about some of the biggest drawbacks? To this decision, um, so, to living in a tiny house. Obviously, for you, it's not space. That's wonderful. It's, that's not a drawback. A lot of people end up grousing about that. But are, are there any major drawbacks? And if the toilet is one of them, so be it. <laughs> and I don't. I don't really have. I don't have any drawbacks to talk about. the The toilet is, is something that, um, although it was different, I got used to it very quickly. Um, and now it's not an issue. It's not something I'm embarrassed about. I'm happy to talk about it. Um, mo most people on the planet don't have plumbing. So uh, just the Worth fact that anyone that has plumbing, is, that, that's the exception. Um, there's, there's a lot of people, the majority of people have to, have de have to deal with things like that. Um, but, um, no, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't have any complaints. There's there's nothing that I'm in want of because of the tiny house. So then, what are the main advantages? 
Is there anything, is there anything where you wake up every day and uh, you're freshly grateful for it, where it's, it's that persistent, a good thing? Um, almost, almost, almost every day I'm grateful for the house. So, um, it's beautiful. We, 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 um, we were able to decide on so many different kinds of materials that are unique and special. Like a, as an example, the, the bookshelves. So when, when Ben and I started talking about building the, the tiny house and we, and I just, I, I made the decision. I said, we're, we're doing it. The first thing I, I, the first thing I said was that I wanted floor to ceiling bookshelves. And I said, we can design the whole house around that premise. So one of the things that we did is we would go to auction houses and um, I, I live out in the farm. So there's, there's or kind of farmland. There's a lot of auctions that are going around all the time. And we went somewhere where they were selling off piles of wood and there was a big pile of cedar, uh, Western red cedar. And we bought, we bought the whole unit uh, for $5. Oh. <laughs> so Ben and I, Ben and I start loading up the truck. And um, if you, you might know, Western red cedar is very light wood. When you pick it up, it's extremely light and it's aromatic. So we started picking up these boards and they were heavy. They were heavy. And Ben and I are looking at each other because we put it together. It's not Western red cedar, it's redwood. And that's a big deal. You can't buy, you can't buy redwood today. It's on, it's, on an, uh, it's on a protected list. You can only buy it if it's reclaimed and it's gold. If you have redwood to sell, it's like having gold. We bought it for $5. So the seller didn't know? Um, the seller, seller didn't, didn't know what they had. No, didn't know what they had, okay. So you have redwood shelves. Looks very similar. Redwood, yeah, floor to ceiling redwood bookshelf. <laughs> um, and the, that's one example. Like th throughout the house, there's so many just very special custom details that, I mean, there, there's people that have $500,000 houses where they still have linoleum floor, dry, white drywall, you know, white ceilings, and there's nothing very special about it. Um, this house uh, really is an extension of my own personality, and I, I, I think about that often. Um, uh, and like last night, uh, I, have, I have a skylight right above the bed, and I was reading in bed last night, and I could see the full moon. I could just look up in bed while I'm reading, look through the skylight, and in the sky, there's a full moon, just like a street lamp. Ah. Uh, so I'm pretty appreciative uh, okay. of my living situation. Yeah. And you, we started this conversation, you started out by saying that financially it made a great deal of sense. And since then you've talked about outlays of money. Uh, what about it made financial sense? What makes financial sense now? Are you saving money by living in a tiny house? Um, in, in, in the long term, yes. So when th this year I could not have done it financially. Um, the, the pandemic has uh, m made lumber prices and building material prices tr triple, quadruple from what they were when I did it. Why is that? Um, the, the, that um, there's been a lot of um, a lot of manufacturing lines have been shutting down. Um, ply plywood, for example, there's there's four plywood major plywood factor, um, uh, factories in the United States. And if there's, a COVID, if there's a COVID case, they shut down for two months. There was one factory that got a COVID case four times this year. So they've been, they would open and just as soon as they opened would shut down again. And that, that has an effect on supply all the way down the supply chain. Okay. Uh, so demand is. So you couldn't uh, have done but, it. But anyway. I mean, you, you couldn't have done it this year. Financially. Not have done it this year. Okay. Um, but, but as it is now, you have. I mean, I'm happy. 
are, you're you're not paying a mortgage or anything. You're right? so yeah. We, we can we can talk specifically. Um, I, I got a twenty thousand dollar bank loan, um, which was able to cover um, <clears throat> all of my materials. The, the the biggest expense is actually the trailer itself. Um, so the whole entire house is built on um, a specific um, a specific trailer designed for tiny houses. Okay. Um, that that was the biggest expense. Um, ben, my friend Ben's labor because I'm I'm paying him back um, was um, le less than twenty thousand uh, for the whole project. Okay. So my uh, my total is around forty thousand um, okay. dollars, and that's something that is just mine. Um, right. When you're talking about the home, the reason that's a large number, right? When you're talking about a home, that's not a large right. number. That's I see what you mean. And um, the, the house will be paid off in a year and a half from wow. today. <laughs> so any half, I'll have everything paid off. And so in that sense, it, you can see why it m makes a lot of sense. Yes. Um, that the house stands, I can probably sell it today for eighty thousand. No um, kidding. And and it doesn't matter where they're as long as they're in the contiguous united states it's a trailer so if anyone's interested in, I'm, I'm not selling it but <laughs> if it were to be for sale someone in maine can buy it and off it goes right and off so it goes. it's right. easy so you have lived in this tiny house for how long is it now um two about two years now. two years and you it sounds like it's a match made in heaven you love it i love it okay so um, watching yeah. there are going to be people who have at least in their minds even if it doesn't make any sense at all pragmatically watching there are going to be people who have idly wondered should i try that maybe they've watched a tiny house video or two and they've wondered you know that seems like a lot less of a headache than what I'm dealing with now. Maybe I should try. And you have done it. So you're an expert and you're right here. <laughs> what, in, in your opinion, what should people think about in personal terms? No, let's leave the finances aside for the minute. In personal terms, before they try it, it are there deal breakers that so, don't apply to you, but that might apply to someone else? Um. So the, the, the biggest consideration, the, the first consideration is what do you want? If, if you're designing it yourself, then you just have to have a list of priorities. And if, you, if there's a certain aspect of a house that you want, you can have it. So if, if you're someone that likes to work in the kitchen, you can have a really nice big kitchen, but then you're not gonna have a big seating area. Um, so for whatever one thing that you want, you can have it, but you don't get to have three or four of the things that. You okay, need. all right. Um, for, for me, uh, I, I wanted to have basically a library. A library. Yes. You can walk in. There's. Okay. Um, and then we we design accordingly. Um, I feel like knowing knowing what sort of lifestyle you really want is important because if it's custom, then then you have the luxury of making making it to what's going to work best for you. Okay. And um, well, e okay. But even if you custom design a tiny house, it's still going to be tiny. Are, are there, do you think there are people who, who would just go out of their skin eventually? They might, they might think at first that it's attractive. I mean, when you're in your tiny so, house, okay, uh, it's pouring rain outside or blinding snow outside, you have only so many places you can go in your tiny house. Right, it, it doesn't sound like it bothers you, but should that be a factor? Should should people think, you know, will you get cabin fever? I'll put it to you this way: I wouldn't want to live here with another person. <laughs> uh, so for, for me, it works really well. Um, if 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 you were, uh, let's say, a newlywed couple. It, it, it seems like the challenges would start going up uh, extremely high very fast. Um, right. you, you would have to really both be in sync. Uh, there's a lot of 
when, when I have company over, a dance begins. There's always, you're kind of always in each other's way. In the kitchen, you can't have two people in the kitchen. It's a right. one man kitchen. Okay. Um, so yeah, like the, depending on your, your um, living situation, it's a huge consideration. Uh, for me, it's no bother. I, I, me and my two cats and we get along fine. Um, but yeah, t- when you watch those tiny house shows where there's two or three or four people, for me that love, I love living in my tiny house. I look at that and think it's a nightmare. <laughs> I've seen some of those videos where the people aren't even couples. And that seems unimaginable to me. There's no privacy, right? There's no chance for privacy in an area that, that you, there's no, do you have a relatively no. small tiny house on, um, on the spectrum of tiny houses. I've it, seen it, it, um, I, I would say it's, it's middle of the ground, uh, middle, middle of the road. Um, it's, it's 200 square feet oh, um, okay. on the ground, on, on the floor plan. And then the loft adds another 80 square feet. So total I have, 280 square feet okay um, which isn't as i mean you can go more extreme but to me it's reasonable uh there, there's people that have 10 foot by eight foot yeah. tiny houses there are people who rehab their, um, their cars the, there are people who live in minivans that have been revamped for uh, to be houses on wheels to be houses on wheels and the, the, the people I think, who, uh, who rehab me, their minivans, they often say that a worry is that someone could just steal the whole house by hot wiring the car. You say that you are on basically, you're not worried about that, are you? That someone could just boost no. the whole house? No, no. <laughs> I'll tell you a funny story real quick. Um, in the middle of construction, uh, my friend Ben was approached by a tiny house expo that was happening at the Carroll County Fairgrounds, which is only maybe a half hour away. They contacted Ben and said, can, can you show your tiny house at the expo? So Ben, ben calls me and he goes, uh, would you mind if I take your house down the road uh, to, to this tiny house? And I agree because I, I trust Ben. I say, I, I, I don't want to know. Don't tell me when it's towing. Don't tell me when you're on the road. Just let me know when it's there. And the, the day that it was happening, like, I never thought I would think to myself, like, I hope my house doesn't get totaled. <laughs> but it, it, it went there and came back. And you stayed somewhere else in the meantime. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the, the, at the Tiny House Expo, hundreds, hundreds of people, it, it was there for two days, hundreds of people walked in and out of the house. Really? Um, it was the most bizarre experience, just a, 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 line, a line of people for eight hours a day. And does your uh, Tiny House have an outside area at all? You say you're in the middle of a field, but do you have like a porch? or a balcony or something? Was that part of the design? I, I do not. I have I have two Adirondack chairs and a little table outside. Um, but ben and I have talked about eventually putting on a screened in porch, um, which I would like to have more, more for the cats. I like the idea of having a little extra space for the cats to go out and uh, safely look around. Um, well. This so is there's traditions to learn all about this. <laughs> so it sounds like, uh, to just to, to conclude, it sounds like this is not a decision for everybody. It's not an option for everybody. No. Uh, especially you're saying now, in purely pragmatic terms, quite apart from whether or not it's the right personal decision, you're saying that thanks to the pandemic in the U.S., it would be ruinously expensive to have something custom made now. Yeah. It's a little bit of a, of a wet blanket uh, on the subject, isn't it? it it's, it's debilitating, yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's, it would be much more expensive to do today than wow. a year ago or two years ago. But it works for you and your books. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, thank you very much. Next time we do this, tomorrow or next week or whenever, because no one's free, no one's safe from Steve on Zoom, we'll have to talk about the books now that we've finished talking about the tiny house. <laughs> but anyway, I want to I want to wrap this up and let you go. Uh, I don't know if you've been able to tell on the video, but I've got a ravenous dog. <laughs> she's just she's decided to attack me while we're doing this, just <laughs> gnawing on me. Attacking me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to wrap up and, and uh, I was going to say play with Frida, but really I am the chew toy. So I'll just, I'm just going to let her do that. <laughs> but thank you very much, Matthew. This was wonderful. We'll have to talk again. Thank you. So thank gonna, you, Steve. Gonna, yeah. Absolutely. Wrap this up and I, in the information to this chat, I will leave a link to Matthew's video. If you haven't gone and subscribed, you all should. <laughs> so have a wonderful day. You and your tiny house at a great Me too. Thank you.